going to finally do another word on the weekend. Um, I feel like it's been weeks and probably because I have, but I wanted, I, it's not that I don't want to do them at all. I just kind of got off schedule. And so here we are. Um, and I think I'm going to pull you guys in a little bit closer. Come closer to me. Okay. So, um, there's something that God really laid on my heart. Um, I actually shared this in church, um, last Sunday on Easter with a church full, which is something that I don't do. Um, I sing on stage. I do not talk on stage. I leave that up to my parents and the other preachers in my family, which I have a lot of them, but I just felt it so heavy. I was battling with it and battling with it and battling with it. And that's a whole other topic for a whole nother day. If you feel like God is leading you to do something, you definitely have to do it. There's no choice for you. You just got to do it. And that's kind of how it was for me. I just, I had to. And so I did. And I was nervous. I, I almost ran off the stage to go get, be sick because it was that bad. Um, but I just don't like talking in front of people. I don't like being the center of attention at all. But um, I thought that I would share it on here as well because I feel like it was so heavy of a thing. And I feel like God was speaking to me about it so strongly that I just feel the need to share on here as well. And so that is what it's going to be about today. So, um, for our church in particular, you know, God, uh, we had a, um, a guest pastor that came and preached for us. Um, and he shared some things that were on his heart specifically for our church. Um, just about some people that are, are going through some things and how um, sometimes you're going through things and you want God to bring you through. And it was just kind of an encouraging word that um, God was going to bring some people through what they were going through, the hard things that they were going through. Um, so in prayer that week or whatever, I was really feeling impressed on my heart that God was just sharing things with me and revealing things to me that weren't exactly easy to swallow and that's usually the way it is if God wants me to tell somebody something it's usually the bad stuff or like the hard to hear stuff it's not all like oh let's throw flowers and everything's going to be wonderful and it's going to be great for you all the time it's no get your butt in high gear and let's get busy let's do something and that's usually what it is but um I'm just going to tell you exactly like I told them um in in old times in battle um, when warriors would go to war, before they ever fought in battle, they would, it's like Braveheart, right? So if you guys haven't, and now I feel like you're too close. Um, <laughs> get close, but not too close. Um, if you ever seen Braveheart, you know, like they stand in these big long lines and the people that are going to war with each other, there's one side and there's the other and they stand and face each other. And that's what they used to do. So warriors in battle, they used to do that. And they would have war paint on their face and their hair would be all crazy. And they'd be screaming and yelling war chants. And the leader would be like who was in Braveheart where he's going on his horse and he's riding back and forth, like revving them up and getting them all ready. Well, number one, it was because they were trying to get courage. You know, they were trying to muster up the courage. I might die, but I'm about to do this with all I've got. Number two, it was because they were trying to intimidate their enemy they were trying to intimidate them and make them fearful because they looked all tough and crazy and there's no telling what they'll do look at them crazy chanting over there and running around in circles and being all crazy we don't want to fight these guys and their hope was that they would flee before they ever had to fight them that they would intimidate them so much that they would flee um in second chronicles um King Jehoshaphat um, was the king of Israel then, and God's people were about to be under attack. There was a threat of being under attack, and these huge armies were about to come, and they were going to slaughter them, and they were afraid of that. I mean, that was a big fear. There were these two. They were the Moabites and the Ammonites, and they were huge armies, tons and tons of soldiers, and they were going to sweep through, and they were going to annihilate them. And so King Jehoshaphat goes to God and he's like, I don't know what to do, God. I mean, it was one of those desperation calls where it's like, um, God, 
I don't know what to do, but if you don't help me, we're going to die. I mean, that's the way it was. And so he went to him and he was asking him, what do I do? What would you have of me? What can I do to get out of this mess? Will you intervene? Will you help us? I'm, you know, we're crying out for help and we need you. And God told them to stand in front of their enemy. To line up in front of their enemy and stand strong and worship him. In one version, it even says, your worship will be your victory. You will gain your victory through your worship. And that's what they did. They stood in front of their enemy and they lined up just like they, they worshiped the God. Battle. They thanked him for the victory that they were going to receive. And they thanked him that their enemies would not defeat them. And they worshiped and they cried out to God. And they were crazy just like they would be any other time. And they did chants and they sang songs and they sang unto the Lord. And they praised him with all that they had, everything they had. You know, their life depended on that praise. They were praising with all they had, girl. They gave it everything they had. It, God had a no, whole other people that wasn't even in the equation. They swept through and they destroyed their enemies in one fell swoop. And then whoever was left destroyed each other. And they were gone. Their enemy was defeated. They were gone. That was it. They were destroyed. All of them. And God's people stood there and they were victorious through their worship. And so when I was sharing this with the church, I was talking about how, you know, God had, had given us that word about how some of us in the congregation were going through things. And I just felt like God was telling me, your worship will be your victory. You will find victory through your worship. And that's what I'm telling you today. I know that a lot of you are going through things. I know that you have it rough. Some of you have even emailed me in the past and you talk to me on Instagram and you Tell me about struggles and things that you're going through and encouragement that you need, which I am happy to give and prayers that you want me to pray and things that you need God to do in your life. And I know that there are so many hurting people out there. There, You might not even watch my videos. You might have just stumbled on this one. And I'm here to tell you right now in this video, me sitting in my bedroom, you will find victory through your worship. You may not feel like worshiping. You don't feel like giving God the praise for a victory that you don't see coming. You may think that it is all hope is lost. It is gone. You see that enemy before you and it is huge. That devil is huge. This problem in your life is huge. It is intimidating and you want to be the one to flee. You want to be the one to give up. Because you don't want to fight anymore. You're tired of fighting. You're scared to fight this battle. You're scared you're going to lose. It is a life or death situation and you are terrified. But I'm here to tell you that you will find victory through your worship. That God is saying that if you will worship him, if you will give him the victory, give him the praise for the victory that you believe is going to happen, not one that has already happened. If you will have faith and if you will hold strong to the promises that he has put in your life, that you will find victory through your worship. It may not even be a victory that you thought. It may not be in the cookie cutter way that you were hoping it would come. You may not have saw that as an option. It could be a whole other people who comes in and defeats your enemy and you didn't even know those people existed. It could be like that. But you will find your victory through your worship. And if you don't worship him, if it is not all you have, if you don't give him everything you've got and it is not the best worship you have ever done, it could be life or death. And that enemy is big. It could destroy you. But you make that choice. It is your choice. And you can find victory through your worship. I mean, I don't know about you, but that kind of gives me chill bumps. There are things in my life that I want him to do. I have asked him to intervene. I have prayed and said, I don't see another way. I need you. You're the only way. That's it. Either you're going to have to do it or it can't be done. Because I can't do this by myself. I can't make it happen. It's not going to be a me thing. It has to be a you thing, God. At any time now, I wish you would show up. I have prayed that prayer so many times about things going on in my life right now. And God spoke to me and said, you will find victory in your worship. And that is the truth. And it is the truth for you as well. 
And if I didn't feel that way, I wouldn't be sharing this video. This is a little bit heavier than most of our word on the weekends, right? This is a little bit heavier than devotions that I've done in the past where I pat you on the back and I encourage you or I softly tell you that we need to do better. This is a little bit different, but it doesn't make it any less true. And I wanted to tell you that today because it is encouraging. It's encouraging there's light at the end of the tunnel. It's encouraging that there is victory around the corner if you will take it. And I hope you choose to take it. I am praying for you. I will leave my email in the description box below. I will leave my Instagram account. You can message me on there. You can get in touch with me. I am available to you. My prayers are yours always. I am praying for everyone who watches this video, everyone who sees the thumbnail. I am praying for everyone that this message is for to speak into your life. If you're not into this thing, you could totally click off. I have lots of different kinds of videos. This one doesn't have to be for you, but it, if it is, if it's for you, then I'm willing to talk to you and help you through it. I'm, I'm willing to pray whatever I need to pray in your specific situation to help you through it. You're not alone. You're not alone. So if you need to contact me, I will leave that information down below. If you're not subscribed, definitely hit the subscribe button. Um, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and want to see more of these videos. And as always, leave your comments down below. And once again, you can email me anytime you like. I'm always there. I will always answer. I appreciate you guys watching. And I love each and every one of you. And you are in my thoughts and in my prayers. Always. And I hope that you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.